This is 17 men's clothing brands that are overrated on reselling YouTube. These are brands that I've heard people recommend before, and I don't agree that they are universally worth picking up. Number one is Tommy Bahama. Please don't flame me in the comments just yet. There's going to be a few fairly sacred cows in this list. I'm not just poking the cows for the sake of poking them. And I'm not tipping them all the way over either. Uh, there are items within all of these brands that are going to be worth selling as a general rule of thumb, really big sizes. So 3XL and up in tops or big pants, those can defeat a bad brand in terms of resale value. Um, the right fabric, like if you find something in cashmere in a bad brand, that can be great. If it's novelty, if it has some figure on it, if it looks like something a character in a movie wore, there are all kinds of different provisos that apply even to bad brands. You can make money selling basically anything. I've made money selling Morona. I've made money selling Club Room. I've made money selling Faded Glory, probably the worst clothing brand in all of menswear. So with a grain of salt, However, Tommy Bahama, overrated. I'm sorry, it is overrated. The overall sell-through rate is 31% in pre-owned condition, and all of this is pre-owned condition, and all of this is data collected from eBay. I calculated it by hand right before making this video, so this is fresh. 31% sell-through on Tommy Bahama across the entire brand, calculated by dividing the, act, uh, the solds by the actives and then multiplying by 100 to get a decimal. 31%, fairly low. Regulars on the channel will know that I prefer to source stuff that has 100% sell-through or higher, or barring that, just something strong, something north of 70% that's fairly healthy. You can make a strong argument that that's high sell-through. 31%, not high sell-through. Now, uh, certain things <clears throat> within each brand are going to sell better than others. Your first assumption would be Tommy Bahama. Surely 100% sell Kawaiian shirts are on the other end of that bell curve and must have higher sell through, you would be mistaken. Uh, casual button down shirts have 27% sell through uh, categorically. Hawaiian shirts, 32%, and silk Hawaiian shirts, also 32% sell through. And like I said, really big sizes, if you find a 5XL, 100% silk, Tommy Bahama Hawaiian shirt, probably worth getting. If you find a Tommy Bahama Hawaiian silk shirt with a novelty embroidered graphic on the back, they have these big um, kind of loungewear graphics on the back or golf themed graphics. Those can be worth picking up, but look them up because specific Tommy Bahama pieces have specific sell-through velocities and are worth varying amounts. Some of those novelty shirts are not worth as much as you might suppose. Interestingly, uh, Tommy Bahama jeans are at 121% sell-through. So the last thing that I would expect to be high selling in Tommy Bahama is the thing that is selling the best, 121% sell-through. They don't seem to go for that much. Average sale price is around 20 bucks. Um, so Tommy Bahama might be worth it. It might not be. Um, this, this brand is really seasonal, a little more so than other brands. So this data was from the previous 90 days, which were winter days. Tommy Bahama, definitely a summer brand, spring, summer brand. So the numbers might pick up. I've historically had pretty good luck with 100% linen stuff from Tommy Bahama. And also their shorts should be coming back online pretty soon. So it's not a trash brand, but just tread lightly. Brand two is the second Tommy. It's Tommy Hilfiger, which when I started reselling was super hot. Vintage Tommy Hilfiger stuff was the piece du jour. It was what everybody was talking about. Uh, cropped up on every men's clothing YouTube video, certainly the recommendation videos to get the big flag. And the big flag stuff can be worth picking up. It has slightly higher sell through than the brand in general. And until I looked at the numbers, I assumed that vintage Tommy Hilfiger stuff had to still be high sell through. I was wrong. The brand Tommy Hilfiger, just as a general brand, has 19% sell through, which is dismal. 
and vintage Tommy Hilfiger, <clears throat> 24%. And this is all in the men's clothing category. This is not including kids. It's not including accessories. It's not including women's clothing. 24%. <clears throat> shirts, vintage Tommy Hilfiger shirts, terrible sellers. Dress shirts are awful. Dress shirts, I just, I would not even touch. Like I said, the big flag stuff has a little bit higher sell through 41% right now. And vintage jeans are the strongest sellers at 70% sell through. And even their vintage jackets, 31%. So Tommy Hilfiger, it, it's, its day may have come and gone. Brand number three is Cuba Vera. This truly is overrated. I have bought it a number of times per recommendations from people and almost always it has sat in a bin for a long, long time before selling for not very much money. Even stuff that's 100% linen, low sales velocity, 29% sell through for the entire brand. Casual shirts, which is what you're mostly gonna find, like their bowling shirts, 30%. Polo's even worse, 10%. 10% sell through on Cuba Vera polo shirts. Pants do a little bit better at 44%. And the one thing that I could spot in the solds that might be worth it, worth seeking out, is linen jackets. They're sport coats, linen sport coats, which are at 44%, and their average sale price is okay. Like 40 bucks, I think. Cuba Vera, pretty safe just to pass unless you can find it for dirt cheap. That goes for all of these brands. If you source at the bins and you find it and you're willing to just throw it in one of these bins and sit on it for a while, perfectly legitimate way to make money. Just don't expect quick flips or a whole lot of money, which are the two things that I like. This next brand I have actually recommended recently on, not this channel, but on the Tommy Bernhardt show when I appeared. Someone uh, put me on the spot and asked me for my top picks for men's dress shirts, which typically I don't sell a whole lot of. And the first thing that popped to mind was Eaton, E-T-O-N. It's renowned as one of the top selling most desirable men's dress shirts. It's another one of those brands that's in every recommendation video. And it's one of those brands that I think kind of lives in a, a, a data void. Uh, I mean, no one really tends to double check these brands that often. And that was the case for me. So Eaton is one of those brands. Overall sell through is 36%. 36% sell through for the whole brand in pre-owned condition. Not good. Uh, their dress shirts, 37%. So one percentage point higher than the brand in general. And they're most known for dress shirts. That's what you're gonna find if you find Eaton. And the average sale price is like $25. It's really not that high. If you can find new with tags, Eaton stuff, it's definitely worth more money. I would pick those up. And to be a broken record, big sizes. Polo shirts, a little higher, 66%, two-thirds, literally two-thirds because there were two solds and three actives when I looked. So polo shirts, quite rare, but they seem to have higher demand for them. And jackets <clears throat> are actually good. Same deal, there weren't a whole lot of them in the active and sold categories, but 125% sell through based on what was there. And Eaton jackets are gonna sell for more money. So is Eaton an unconditional purchase for dress shirts? Absolutely not. Next brand is Guess. G Guess is known as a trash brand, relatively trashy brand for resale. However, vintage Guess gets promoted from time to time as something that's more desirable. It is not necessarily more desirable. Guess in general as a brand has 37% sell through and vintage, vintage Guess has 40% sell through. So tiny uptick in sales velocity there. And the numbers are pretty grim. T-shirts in vintage Guess, 31%. Casual shirts, button down shirts, 17%. Polo shirts, 10%. Dress shirts, 33%. And jackets, coats and vests, 36%. And the numbers for just contemporary general guests are going to be even lower. Um, interestingly, there are two categories that have close to or above 100% sell through, and that's vintage guest jeans. Not a huge shock. 
I guess, 94% sell through on vintage guest jeans. And those will have the triangle logo with a question mark in it. Those are desirable. And pants, I, I suppose chinos and etc. 132% sell through on pants. Shorts are lower, 47%, and sweaters, 18%. So jeans and pants. Please don't scream at me for this one. Harley Davidson. A specific category of Harley Davidson is overrated. This is, I, this is an overrated brand, but just barely. It's a really strong brand. It's not a trash brand by any means, but their graphic tees. Do not buy the graphic tees without looking before you leap because the sell-through is way lower than you would anticipate. So overall, Harley Davidson has 58% sell-through on a brand level. T-shirts, 43% with uh, an average sale price of between 20 to 25. So it's one of those brands where when you see it, it lights up your brain. You get the dopamine rush of finding the thing that you want in the thrift store, but just don't be completely seduced by the t-shirts. There's a huge variance in terms of sell through on sizes and the actual graphics on the shirts. They're typically location specific. So you'll find like Harley Davidson, Maui, Hawaii, Harley Davidson, Salt Lake City. Um, these various novelty shirts are very narrow niches that you can search on eBay before buying. Some of them are in demand, some of them are not. I think for memory, Sturgis stuff, the, the motorcycle rally, those shirts tend to do quite well. Vintage Harley Davidson shirts can do quite, quite well. And of course, if you find anything in leather, just buy it. Tops, bottoms, doesn't matter. Harley Davidson leather stuff is phenomenal. Their casual button up shirts actually are doing better than I thought they were. 75% uh, sell through on casual buttoned shirts. Polo shirts, pretty bad, 33%. Coats, jackets, vests, 106%, so over 100% sell through on outerwear. Jeans, 101%. I don't think I've ever found Harley Davidson jeans, but if you find them, definitely pick those up. Sweater, 67%, not too bad. Pants, 129%. Most of those were leather chaps. Shorts, interestingly, 152% sell through on shorts. And that number is only going to go up as it gets warmer. Had no idea. Had no idea about Harley Davidson shorts before running these numbers. That's one of the reasons why I love this particular method of research so much, it surprises you. Uh, and another surprise, Harley Davidson swimwear, 138%. So awesome, Harley Davidson, good brand, possibly would go so far as to call it a great brand, but the stuff that you're gonna find the most often is those t-shirts. And I can speak from experience that sometimes you buy them and they just sit and sit and sit and sit. So just be cautious on the t-shirts. The next brand is J. Crew. This one hurts me uh, because a couple years ago, this was probably my top bread and butter brand. You could find it anywhere you went, any thrift store in California. And it had close to or above 100% sell through just across the whole brand in men's clothing. And then it just precipit it just took a nosedive. It went down Splash Mountain. Sell through right now is 39% for the brand. Shirts are pretty bad. Generally, the casual button-down shirts are at 26%, which wounds me even more deeply because those were the, the breadest and the butterest of, of this brand for me. Dress shirts, dismal, 13% sell-through. Interestingly, t-shirts are at 78% sell-through. Doesn't usually happen. Usually t-shirts are uh, lower sell-through, from my observation. Polo shirts, 34%, pretty bad. Sweaters, 52%, there's some potential there. Pants, 47%. Coats, jackets, and vests, 64%, so okay numbers. Shorts, 36%, again, that number will, ri will raise, rise, will rise as the summer progresses. Suits, 39%. I've historically had great luck selling Ludlow, Ludlow jackets, but this was at least a year ago, so don't trust that anecdote, as you shouldn't trust anybody's anecdotes entirely. Uh, J. Crew jeans, 
J.Crew swimwear, 32%. Activewear, 88%. So activewear is strong. Activewear is strong. Outerwear is okay. T-shirts are pretty good. That is a fall from grace. Here's another screamer. Vineyard Vines. I've mentioned this in videos prior to this one. Vineyard Vines is not an unconditional buy. It is an okay brand. It is not a great brand. I'm not even convinced it's that good of a brand. It really varies from category to category, as I will illustrate to you, as is my want. Overall sell-through is 55%. Casual shirts, button-down uh, button shirts, 43%. T-shirts, 120%. So that's a good one. Polos are 50%. Dress shirts, 25%. Shorts, 45%. Pants, 46%. Sweaters, 87%. So that's pretty good. Active wear, 91%. Pretty good. I would guess that that's joggers and sweatpants that are selling. Coats, jackets, and vests, 80%. Swimwear, 113%. That number is also going to climb. Jeans, 103%. I think Vineyard Vines jeans are pretty rare. And suits, 82%. Okay, so I take it back. It's a pretty good brand. Um, I, am, I have convinced myself this is a good brand. It is not a great brand. Don't jump up and down in the thrift if you find it. Don't do a little dance. Tread with caution. Proceed with trepidation because countless times I have bought Vineyard Vines stuff because I saw it on YouTube and I put it in here and it stayed in here for a year. I am going to take pleasure in uppercutting this next brand. It's Michael Kors, one of the worst selling clothing brands uh, on all of eBay. It's, I can think of no other brand that has so giant a, a gulf between the retail price and the resale price and popularity. It's awful. 16% sell through for the entire brand and there are no lights at the end of that tunnel. So 16% sell-through rate for the whole brand. Casual button-down shirts, 11%. Dress shirts, 6%. Polo shirts, 11% sell-through. T-shirts, 26%. Coats, jackets, and vests, 31%. Suits, 18%. Sweaters, 16%. Pants, 22%. Jeans, 57%. Maybe on a good day with a cloudless sky, I would pick up Michael Kors jeans, active wear, 35% shirts, uh, uh, shorts, sorry, 15% and swimwear, 25%. Trash. Next brand is Nat Nast, which is sitting not so comfy at 29%. Um, they're most known for their shirts. And their shirts suck right now. Casual button-down shirts are at 33%. Polo shirts are at a whopping 5% sell-through. Nobody wants the polo shirts. Nobody wants the dress shirts at 24%. T-shirts, 23%. Jeans, which I didn't know that they made, are at 49%. Sweaters, 25 Coats, jackets, and vests, 66 but there were barely any on the market on either side. Swimwear, a stunning 7% sell-through. Pants, 20%. And suits, an astonishing 0% sell-through on Nat Nast suits. I would limit this brand only to exceptional fabrics and exceptionally large sizes. This one is interesting. I'm not sure it really belongs on this list, but I'm gonna include it anyway, just because the data is compelling. It's Masters, which is a golf brand. Um, I have bought it from time to time, haven't found it that much. Some of the stuff I have not been able to flip quickly. Right now, the sell-through rate is at 42%, but the numbers seem to tell a story that it is a very seasonal brand, which would make sense because it's a golf brand and that tends to happen with golf brands. 42% sell through. Their casual button down shirts are at 37%. Polo shirts are at 20%. T-shirts at 63%. Pretty low, especially for a prestige brand, allegedly a prestige brand like Masters. However, coats, jackets, and vests, 277% sell through which is incredible. That is top flight sell-through for menswear. Uh, sweaters, 138%. Uh, 
which is also exceptionally high. So that tells me that the brand is strong, but is very vulnerable to seasonality, which checks out uh, just on a gut level. I haven't sold it personally enough to attest to this on either side. Uh, and they're active wear 95% right now for some reason, which is pretty strong and shorts at 44%. So I, I'm gonna monitor this because I'm just really curious. I anticipate those numbers leveling out come uh, the warm months. This next one is another painful one for me because this is the first brand that I ever sold on eBay. This is the brand that started my entire clothing reselling career and I've picked it up a bunch since then and I've been left scratching my head as to why it's not selling. It's Paul and Shark or Paul and Shark Yachting. 49% sell through on Paul and Shark Yachting. Shirts are weak, hovering between 30 and 50%. Um, Sweater 61%, outerwear is not great, about half sell through. Um, jeans, interestingly, are 105%, never found those. So if you find Pollen Shark jeans, those are doing great. Pants, 36%, and shorts, 100%. Uh, perfectly 100% sell through. I think there were four actives, four solds. Swimwear, 42%. So uh, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to flip it for that much. So it's just, it's okay numbers across the board. It's unimpressive numbers except for jeans and shorts. So if you just find a really basic dress shirt or something, I would, I would second guess. Let's go on to Nautica, which is another Hall of Famer uh, trash brand right now. 20% sell through across the whole brand. And none of the numbers for any of the categories are above 60%, most of them are below 25%. The highest selling category is jeans at 59%. And even vintage stuff, which is what I would have guessed would be higher sell through, is not selling. 23% sell through with an average price of around 20 bucks. I've done okay with their vintage sailing windbreakers, especially color block stuff. Color block stuff in general, vintage from Nautica, historically has sold well for me, but again, that's that's a couple of data points from a long time ago that are not necessarily that relevant to what the market is doing right now. So I would have a great deal of caution when it comes to Nautica. I did pick up a shirt from them recently that was five uh, 5XLT, so five extra large tall. Um, if you can't find something really special, I would just avoid the brand entirely or new with tag stuff, maybe. Next brand is Thomas Pink, which I have never had good luck with. It gets recommended all the time and I don't know why. It's one of these legacy brands that people just accept as being highly in demand, even though it isn't. It's 30% sell through for the whole brand. Mostly they're known for dress shirts, which you find occasionally, and the dress shirts are bad sellers. They're 32% sell through, average sale price of $19. That's not good. Those are not good numbers. Um, and there's really, there's not that much else to recommend Thomas Pink. Although I have sold a pair of their swim trunks before for $40 because their swimwear is uh, extremely rare. So if you find swim trunks, they might be worth uh, picking up. They probably are. There are zero actives and zero solds for Thomas Pink swim that I could find. Um, so the dress shirts suck pretty bad. Their casual shirts are even worse. Suits are at 47%, which is not bad numbers for suits right now because the suit market took a big hit because um, of COVID, any kind of dressier jackets not selling that great right now sweaters 59 percent that's okay uh coats jackets and vests 83 percent but there's not that many of them jeans 100 percent but there was there was one active and one sold so not it's not that clear of a landing zone for thomas pink i would uh land your craft elsewhere next one is disney disney is a huge brand and if you're gonna buy Disney, it needs to be something special for the most part. It has 31% sell-through across the whole brand in menswear. Um, 
Their vintage stuff is a little bit higher. It's 46% and has average an average sale price over $40. So the right vintage piece you can sell for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Some of the really old stuff, I, I've never found it. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but really old, really special stuff is gonna be worth picking up. But the general pieces are not great. Jeans are at 77%, which is pretty good. Everything else is hovering around 50% or less. Um, they're just okay numbers, but they're pretty anemic. And it's it's a, a flooded market. Really basic stuff is not gonna be worth your time probably. The next one also hurts because I've made a lot of money off of this brand in the past. It's Hart Schaffner Marks. Sell through is 20% right now. This brand is in the toilet. This brand is Steve-O in the porta potty being bungeed up and down right now. It's just awful. 20% sell through in general, 21% sell through on suits, which is what they're most known for. I have a gold trumpeter suit that I got that I anticipated selling really quick and it's still sitting there. And it's because gold trumpeter stuff is at 15% sell through and gold trumpeter is one of their highest end lines. That's the thing that you're looking for when you look for Hart Schaffner Marks pieces. Uh, heartbreaking, so to speak. Pants, 22%. Shirts are the plague, 7%. Coast jackets, vests, 17%. Sweaters, 26 Jeans, 37 Shorts, 0%. Just avoid it. Uh, this is one of the few brands I would issue just a blanket statement. Just don't even bother. So the next brand is also the last brand, and it's going to be actually a recommendation. This is a Bolo brand. It's Columbia PFG. I didn't think that the numbers would be this strong because they took a dip for a while, but they seem to be back up. So Columbia as a general brand is pretty bad. It's 39%, which is quite low, especially considering how well most other outdoor clothing brands are doing at the moment. But the Columbia PFG stuff, which is pro fishing gear, is sitting at 70% sell through which is not that impressive, but it's not bad. There's enough meat on the bone there to warrant um, looking up specific pieces when you find them. Uh, pro PHG, pro hunting gear, is doing even better at 83%. And I've never personally found this, but it might be more abundant where you live. Um, so the casual button-down shirts are probably what you're gonna find, and those are at 68% sell-through, which is okay. T-shirts are 77, which is pretty good. And polo shirts are at 33, so maybe avoid the polo shirts. Um, and that's that's historically been the case too. I've never really looked up the PFG polo shirts and been that impressed. I've, in fact, never, I think, really. No, I picked up a couple because I found them in a lot for cheap. But anyway, the, uh, the long sleeve UPF shirts, the like compression type, activewear type shirts, should do pretty well, although it was hard to pinpoint those in the searches. Uh, shorts are great right now. So Columbia PFG shorts are at 140%, which is phenomenal. And like all other brands, those numbers should go up as we go into summer. And their pants are at 131%. I assume that those are lightweight vented fishing pants for the most part, or maybe the convertible long pants that you can turn into shorts because the knees zip. Those are, are great if you can find them. And jackets at 72%. So overall, there's a, a lot of air in the lungs here. This is a, a strong showing for Columbia PFG. So I am pleasantly surprised that that is not an overrated brand. If you'd like my guide to what brands are actually good, I took this approach to 100, no, 215 men's clothing brands that I put into a Google Doc that's available for free on a donation basis, it's pay what you want. The link is in the description. So if you find a lot of value in it, you can circle back around and pay me later, or you can pay up front. It's 215 brands broken down by sell through like this, very granularly per brand. And um, it gives priority to really high selling brands. So brands that are over 100% sell through that constitutes about half of the list. Again, totally free. Um, the the popularity of it has kind of taken me aback. This is the first video release since I, I launched it. And thank you very much uh, to everybody that did pay me for it. Uh, I didn't expect that many people to pay me and people seem to love it. So if that's of interest to you, 
Link is in the description. And now I am going to do a little bit of an unboxing slash haul video. This is a package that was sent to me from Heroin Bob, who has a great YouTube channel that I will also link in the description. She sells mostly porcelain, um, mostly dishes, dishware, and a little bit of clothing, I think. And I, I dig her videos and very generously just offered me a bunch of clothing for free. So let's see what I got. So I got a nice note from her. Wow, so this is, this is a well-packed big gob of clothes here. Wouldn't you know it. <laughs> so this is a... Uh, this is actually going to sell just fine because I'm going to list it as a fishing shirt. It's not necessarily a fishing specific shirt. This could be just a general hiking shirt, but the aesthetics are right. And that pocket fits in with fishing. So these Velcro, which is not a keyword that you are permitted to use on eBay or shouldn't do so freely, use hook and loop instead because Velcro is um, copywritten or you'll, you could get a Vero charge. Um, but the, the Velcro pocket, the big cargo pocket there, and then this zip here with the mesh. It's not a, a vented shirt. Most proper fishing shirts are vented, but if I throw the fishing keyword on there, that should make for a relatively quick flip, and I will probably price it close to the bottom of the market just because I acquired it for free. And look at this. I swear this was not planned. This is... A PFG shirt. So this will help illustrate. <laughs> That's the PFG logo. And this is a small. I actually may keep this. If this fits me, then this is going to become my shirt because I need fishing shirts. That's pretty sweet. Here's another one. Lime green Columbia PFG. Vented fishing shirt. So this is what a proper fishing shirt looks like. It has these vents. Sometimes it's vented from the bottom. Let's see how it has all the pockets on the front. And then this thing, this little Velcro tab right here is a dead giveaway. Um, this is meant to hold, hold your fly rod as you are taking a photo with a fish so you can have your hands free. So that is what a honest to God fishing shirt looks like. And fishing shirts in general are um, typically pretty high sell through regardless of brand, even like bad, like relatively bad brands like Eddie Bauer, some of their fishing shirts can sell really well. I haven't run those numbers recently. This is really good. Under Armour polo shirts are great sellers. Um, is this heat gear? Let me look at the tab. This is not anything specific under Armour heat gear stuff, especially polo shirts, are really strong sellers. I don't remember the actual sell through numbers on Under Armour polos, but Under Armour in general is a pretty desirable bread and butter brand. It's strong sell through, and those polo shirts have always sold very quickly for me. Here's uh, Under Armour loose heat gear. This right here, heat gear. The loose heat gear polos are great sellers. I don't think they sell for all that much but the demand is definitely there or has been. Here is another Under Armour polo. Small. Here's a basic Adidas polo shirt. This is an active shirt. Performance shirt. It's another keyword. Might also list it with the keyword golf. Here's a men's medium Adidas Climacool basic active t-shirt. Here's another medium. Those stripes are probably pretty attractive to someone. It's kind of a mesh active shirt. There's a few of these, it appears, and I'm probably gonna wind up lotting these together because individually the sell-through or the, the prices are not gonna be all that high probably. This looks to be the most valuable one just because it has that Adidas logo on the chest and the black and white striping is pretty classic. That would be my guess at least. So at least those three are gonna get lotted up together. Here's a North Face button up shirt. North Face stuff I have historically stayed away from, but this, the numbers are quite strong right now, um, likely due to COVID. I will list this 
possibly also as a fishing shirt. Here is another North Face, the A5 series, which I've never seen before. That might be something. Let me actually look that up right now. 218 sold to 569 actives for North Face A5. So it looks like A5 does not confer uh, more sell-through value. But another decent little North Face shirt. If I got it for free, it's a great item. Uh, oh, and here's another one. Another A5. Medium. Another North Face. These might get lotted up as well. And the last one is another North Face A5 medium. So those are going to go in a lot. This is kind of a cooler plaid. A little more detailing on the fabric. So awesome, awesome gift. I'm super grateful. Really nice of her. Please check her channel out. It's my stamp of approval regardless of the gift. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this info helps you out. And if you're interested in the manifesto, links in the description. And thanks for watching.